Okay, I'll give it to him. That mask is almost as creepy as the baby mask in Happy Death Day. It is also the scariest thing in the whole movie, though, so... Hello, Internet. Since it's the most wonderful time of the year, I've been catching up on horror movies, and today I want to take a quick look at Totally Killer, a time travel slasher comedy starring Kiernan Shipka. This movie is a ton of fun, and I had a great time watching it, but it somehow also manages to be one of the worst horror movies I've seen in a while. Used to be a serial killer. Oh, sweetheart. Would a serial killer wear Gloria Vanderbilt? And it's frustrating because I think Totally Killer is on the precipice of actually being a horror classic, but falls flat because it doesn't commit, resulting in a tone that just doesn't feel like horror. By the way, your shirt is super problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like your shirt. I still recommend it though, especially if you like horror that's a bit on the lighter side with regards to gore and scares. It's a bad horror movie, but I think it's actually a pretty good movie. Totally Killer was released on October 6th of this year. It's directed by Nanachka Khan, who also directed Always Be My Maybe, and has a number of TV writing credits, including Malcolm in the Middle and Pepper Ann. Her only credited experience with horror is two episodes of What's New Scooby-Doo, and unfortunately it shows. I think this may explain some of the Disney Channel vibes the movie gives off. I'm, I'm Jamie. Um... La Fleur, and I'm an exchange student from Canada. And its sense of discomfort with the horror genre. It's also only her second film, and I think she has some good instincts, but would have benefited from getting more comfortable with horror and its aesthetic sensibilities. I've seen a lot of reviews excusing the movie's tone problem as being the result of its low budget of around $24 million, but when you compare Totally Killer to something like Talk To Me, which had less than a quarter of this movie's budget, I think that excuse falls a bit flat. There are lots of low-budget horror movies that execute their premise incredibly effectively. There was a point where low-budget made up most of the horror genre. The problem with Totally Killer is it feels like it could take or leave its horror elements, almost like it's reluctant to be a horror movie. So let's get into it. Kiernan Shipka's Jamie is an ordinary teen growing up in a town where three 16-year-old girls were killed in rapid succession back in October of 1987 by a serial killer who has never been caught. Jamie's parents were friends with the victims, especially her mom, Pam. You know how hard this time of year is for us. I mean, especially now that you're the same age as we were. So I can't go to a concert because your friends were murdered 35 years ago. Who is overprotective because of it. Keychain pepper spray, a rape alarm. You've made me take self-defense classes since I was seven. You gave me a protective crystal you got from a psychic. When the killer unexpectedly returns, Jamie is accidentally sent back to 1987 in a time machine built by her best friend and tries to stop the killer and save the victims. The movie wants to be a mix between Scream and Back to the Future, and even explicitly references both movies. Please tell me you've seen Back to the Future. Of course. Oh, thank God. Think of me as Marty McFly. I was thinking it could also be two killers, you know? Like in Scream. Scream? It's not out yet. It's a movie from the future that you think stars Drew Barrymore, but then doesn't. But ultimately doesn't manage to live up to either, and it's a shame because I think the bones of Totally Killer were good, and it could have actually been great if it just leaned into the horror a little bit more. With its soap opera lighting and lack of tension, it feels like horror that's scared to be scary despite its R rating. Half the time, it looks and feels like a Disney Channel movie. Although, at times, Totally Killer manages to use horror tropes and genre conventions well, one of the most important things about horror is its aesthetic and sense of atmosphere. In a good horror movie, there's thoughtfulness and intention even in the scenes that aren't necessarily scary. They tend to have a deliberate sense of how they're supposed to make you feel as a viewer. The best horror movies also create a permeating sense of unease that stays with you the whole time and sometimes even after the movie is over. In Totally Killer, the horror visuals just aren't there, and the scenes that are supposed to feel scary mostly don't. For example, towards the end of the movie, there's a scene where the kids are trying to trap the killer in a haunted house. Being stalked by a real killer in a fake haunted house is a horror movie classic that almost always has me on the edge of my seat and looking over my shoulder at any haunted house I go to. This scene does actually look and feel more like a horror movie, but the pacing just doesn't feel scary, and the rest of the film is so without atmosphere that it's too little too late. It's not that I don't like the John Hughes 1980s romantic comedy look they seem to be going for aesthetically. I just wish they did something to make it feel a bit more moody the way something like It Follows does. 
because I think the look of this movie could actually have really worked with a few little tweaks. Totally Killer manages to squeeze out a few scary moments, and I will say the first on-screen kill is actually pretty great and close to the level of something you would see in Scream, but overall it lacks tension. I watched the original 1996 Scream again immediately after this movie, and there's just no comparison. But I'm gonna try anyways. Scream has a lot of the same story elements as Totally Killer, minus the time travel stuff. It's about a teenage girl trying to stop a killer while dealing with a tragedy, and both movies fuse horror and comedy. What's this? You have his DNA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, sweetheart, we'll just fire up the old worldwide DMA database. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. For instance, number one, you can never have sex. <laughs> Don't have sex, because you will get pregnant and die. Don't have sex in the missionary position. Don't have sex standing up. Just don't do it, promise? Offer us some red herrings and explicitly reference other movies. We're here! Huh? Not your friend. Both Scream and Totally Killer feature comically useless cops. But where Scream works because its characters feel grounded and real. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, come on, you know I don't watch that shit. Why not? Too scared. No, no, it's just, what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. A lot of the scenes in Totally Killer are given off the vibe of a Lifetime movie. He now, and owns a clean water charity, so... Honey, he's giving the middle finger. Yeah, to single-use plastic. I'm an investigative journalist. No, your dad is. You're a tour guide. And it takes you right out of the story. It's especially strange because Kiernan Shipka is a great actress. She was wonderful in The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Would you like to do the honors? <laughs> With pleasure. Rise! Rise! And gave an impressive performance in Mad Men even when she was very young. I heard you laughing. How can you be sitting there like nothing's happening? Like he's not gone. He was here, now he's not here. At times she is great in this movie. Like, this little expression here just breaks my heart. So does this one. Cause he killed me. Cause he killed my- But there are other scenes where the delivery just doesn't feel real. There's gonna be a murder tonight at Tiffany Clark's party, which is also gonna be filled with underage drinking, so you should definitely be there to shut it down anyway. I think it gets better towards the middle of the movie, but at the beginning, the performances feel particularly weak. This has nothing to do with me. You know, I sort of wish you guys would just get over it. It's definitely not just Kiernan Shipka who's having trouble, though. There are several scenes where the delivery lacks a sense of authenticity from anyone. He doesn't even have his hood up. I think he might get a second Pulitzer for this. What's up? I know it's hard to lose someone that you love. Interestingly, I'd say the worst part of the movie performance-wise is the older actors. Listen, the sheriff has some questions for you. They didn't have a relationship. We looked at her phone. A lot of text between those two. Jesus, Kara, you don't want to warm up to that? In pretty much every scene they're in, I'm very conscious that it is a person reading lines. I don't think any of them fully embody their characters. Except maybe the receptionist in the 80s. She absolutely radiates not giving a fuck energy. Okay, you don't, you don't need to verify anything. Verify? What is this, Fort Knox? You're late for gym. Is there, can I get a different schedule? I Another big difference between Totally Killer and something like Scream is that Scream is a horror movie first and a comedy second, which prevents the comedy from taking all the air out of the scares. I must have seen Scream dozens of times at this point, and I still feel tense during the scary scenes, even though I know exactly what's gonna happen. Do you want to die, Sydney? Your mother sure didn't. Fuck you, you creep. Scream creates a sense of anticipation and suspense, and the fight and chase scenes are so well paced and scored that they are still effective even 27-ish years later. <laughs> On an unrelated note, I can't believe Scream is that old, I feel so ancient, I'm basically dead. Totally Killer seems like it's afraid of taking itself too seriously. And I wish I told her that I loved her more. I just didn't understand what she- Hey, I'm saying this as a friend. 
But nobody wants to hear you talk about how much you love your mom, okay? And feels almost uncomfortable with its horror elements. It's more like a time travel comedy with horror as an afterthought to give a reason for the time travel. It had the potential to explore some darker themes like trauma, grief, and guilt, but constantly puts them on the back burner, which limits the depth of the characters and the story. Let's contrast this with Scream, where Sydney's grief is palpable in everything she does. It doesn't keep her from being funny and badass, but it feels like it's always there, almost like a companion. Later Scream movies also explore the impact of surviving the Woodsboro murders on Sydney and the others. Totally Killer had an opportunity to do more of that with Jamie's parents, but they don't really explore it. It's especially underutilized with Jamie's dad, whose girlfriend at the time was one of the victims. I also really can't get over how Totally Killer looks. I know I complain about movies and TV being too dark to see anything these days, but Totally Killer goes way too far in the other direction, and some scenes are so bright that it's almost hard on the eyes. Even at night, there's no sense of atmosphere. The movie is set around Halloween in both the present day and the 1980s. The sequences in the past don't feel lived in, but worse, Totally Killer just doesn't capture Halloween. Trick or Treat is another horror comedy I love and watch pretty much every year. And one of my favorite things about it is it is absolutely dripping with Halloween, shifting between the cozy orange light of jack-o'-lanterns and festivities to dark, creepy scenes that contrast childhood nostalgia for Halloween with some genuinely scary horror elements. When you compare it to the look of Totally Killer, there's just something missing. I forget it's supposed to be October until the characters name drop Halloween again. We even get a couple shots of Halloween-related activities and festivities, but the Halloween vibe is just missing from the whole movie anyways. Even something like Hocus Pocus, an actual Disney movie, does a better job of capturing the sense of Halloween. That entire movie just screams Halloween. The characters don't need to keep reminding you because you feel Halloween everywhere. I think even without changing anything about the horror in the actual plot, Totally Killer would work so much better if the movie just had more of that Halloween aesthetic. But most of the movie feels like it could be July for all the lack of spooky vibes. The lighting in a lot of the scenes feels off, almost like it's lit for a comedy, but they added filters to try and make it seem spookier. And there's a kind of slickness to everything that makes you feel very conscious that you're watching a movie. It has no grit, and that's a big problem when there are so many better horror properties set in the same era that actually maximize their setting. But I don't want to spend this whole video ragging on this movie. As I said, I do recommend Totally Killer. It's a good time. The teen characters are enjoyable, if not entirely believable. And the time travel plot is actually fairly well written, and credits itself with lots of little moments of setup and payoff. There are quite a few touching moments, and some interesting bits with Jamie realizing her mother was more like her as a teen than she claimed. I can't go to a concert because your friends were murdered 35 years ago. I would never have spoke to my mother like that. Well, you don't speak to grandma at all. Hi girls, just checking on you, seeing if you need anything. Ah, uh, mom, we're fine! We're fine! There's definitely a charm to this movie. It's also really funny. I laughed out loud multiple times watching it. Hey, I, I thought you were going to get Amelia! Why don't you just knock? No. Dad, it's so rude. A lot of the best jokes come from Shipka's Gen Z Jamie interacting with the culture of the 1980s. Did you just want to les out this weekend? It's gross. Not your your comment was gross. Not not gay people. Gay people are amazing. Your comment was homophobic undertones. The dodgeball scene was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> As was the sort of laissez-faire attitude about a lot of things like secondhand smoke. <coughs> Jeez. Seriously. Getting in cars with strangers. I'll give you a ride. But no, I can't get in a car with you. You're a total stranger. You have to be a serial killer. Oh, sweetheart. Would a serial killer wear Gloria Vanderbilt? Or school registration. You don't. You don't need to verify anything. Verify. What is this, Fort Knox? Not to mention the bullying. Ah, uh, nice try. Unwanted oh. touch. Oh my god, unwanted touch. Unwanted human. You know, this whole Mean Girls chick is really outdated. Women should be lifting each other up. How about I lift these up and you get bent? Although, I almost wish the movie had taken some of this a little bit further, because it still ends up feeling very modern. And capturing more of a sense of the era would have really helped this movie along, I think. 
It would have also helped to have more Halloween decorations visible throughout the movie, as well as making better use of contrasting color and lights to offset darker scenes and moments rather than keep everything so brightly lit and just adding that blue tint. If you're going to do that, at least commit like Twilight. The pacing and choreography for most of the scenes could use some work if they wanted to create more suspense. It feels like the wrong parts of the fight often go on for too long, while other parts feel too short. The scoring and sound design of the horror scenes also leaves a lot to be desired. What the fuck are you doing? Ow, what the Although this movie does have a great soundtrack. <laughs> Cinematography also suffers from being a bit boring when it could add so much more creativity and emphasis to the creepier story elements. Although I will admit there are a few match cuts that are pretty good, and I do like this transition here, it's just generally it feels a bit uninspired and could do more for the movie. But even with these issues, I really liked the writing, especially the way Jamie parallels Cassandra, a figure in Greek myth who saw the future, but no one would believe her, so the future would unfold as she saw it, despite her warnings. We get a lot of scenes with Jamie trying to warn people who won't listen to her. Which is how I know there's going to be a murder tonight. Murder. <laughs> There's never been a murder in Vernon. It's funny, but after she's proven right the first time, it gets frustrating for her and for us that people still won't listen. It's... Oh my god, what's the big deal? The big deal, Heather, is that there is a murderer on the loose specifically targeting your friend group and you drove us into the woods. Irrespective of my complaints, I enjoyed this movie a lot. It's great if you want a fun comedy with a sprinkling of horror and a nostalgic time travel plot. It certainly doesn't maximize its R rating. Definitely more of a PG-13 situation. Which does actually make me wonder if they were originally setting out to make a PG-13 movie and then something kicked it up to an R rating and they decided to just go with it. It's great for people who want a little taste of horror but don't want to be totally immersed in it. A lot of the jokes are really funny and it's a bit of a nice break between scarier movies. This movie has a lot going for it. It's just that at the end of the day, on the spectrum between Scream and Scary Movie, it's closer to the latter than the former in terms of the scares and, at times, the tone. Some other miscellaneous things I liked were the complete uselessness of the cops, how surprisingly solid the jock bro dudes turned out to be as friends to the mean girls. I also really like Jamie's best friend Amelia and that she goes and seeks out Amelia's mother when she goes back in time to the 80s. I love the Mollies. The mean girls being obsessed with Molly Ringwald is objectively silly, but it just works for me and the costuming for them is full of fun 80s movie callbacks. I really like Kara, but she's way too cool to be a cop when she grows up. Chekhov's nail gun is introduced early in the movie and comes back in an entertaining if silly way later on. I also really enjoy the attention to detail in some elements of this movie. There's a ton of setup and payoff and little details you notice on rewatch, so it's not that Totally Killer was phoned in or anything. It was clearly made with some passion and care despite the slightly disjointed feel of the final product. The movie does also do a great job of capturing a sort of small town feel where everybody knows everybody and has forever, which I can attest is accurate. But that's just my opinion. Have you seen Totally Killer? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't worry, your regular programming will be back soon, including a review of this week's episode of Lower Decks. Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time, Vitor Zane.